So this next question that we're going to do is rather rather hard question that I really don't really like. It's explained the significance of complementary base pairing for replication, transcription, and translation. And straight away, I'm going to talk about replication, transcription, and translation, and how things are involved. But just prior to that, I want to define what complementary base pairing is, and that's what I'm writing down right now. So you need to talk about the different nitrogenous bases and how they pair in both DNA and RNA. And the key difference here is that A goes to T in DNA, and A goes to U in RNA. So now I'm going to be talking about DNA, and I want to talk about how complementary base pairing results in two um, identical daughter strands of DNA in when this occurs in DNA replication. And you can add in another line down here that the process is semi-conservative, that the mother strand of DNA is broken into half, and each daughter strand of DNA will have one strand, which is from the mother, and another newly synthesized strand. Now if we move on to mRNA, we need to talk about how mRNA is complementary to the DNA strand using the above rules, A to U, C to G, and that each triplet of mRNA is, is defined as a codon. Now if we go into our next one, we were talking about tRNA, and I know I'm rushing a bit here, but it's important to know that mRNA is translated to form a polypeptide. And each codon, or each triplet of uh, triplet code on the mRNA, has a complementary anticodon, which is found on the tRNA. And as a result, each tRNA molecule carries a specific amino acid on there, which is used during um, protein synthesis. And then this results in elongation of the polypeptide. So that's how you do this particular question.